If you're working with AI or APIs, one of the things that's critical to know is how JSON works. And in today's video, we're gonna be covering seven different examples of how you can integrate JSON with Python pandas. We're gonna go from data frames to JSON and then JSON back into data frames. We're also gonna go over an API example that will be free to use. So with this out of the way, we're gonna jump onto my computer and start coding. Also, all of the code from this video will be found down below on our website. All right, let's start coding. All right, let's jump right into it. So we're gonna start off with import pandas as PD, so as PD, import in JSON. We're gonna also import in requests, requests. And then from pandas, import JSON normalize. All right, so we have all of that. I'm gonna run this over here. And we're gonna get started, which is gonna be building out our first example. And what we're gonna do on this side of things is create a data frame from a JSON string. Now, what I recommend is you just grab all the code for this video on my website. We'll have an article on there pretty soon. It should probably be out before this video, but regardless, what I'm gonna do is just copy over here and I'm gonna just call this as data JSON. And I have a few different uh, runners over here. I believe these were times just for Western States 100. I'll be honest, I prepped this video about a month ago and Western States just ended. So these should be the times associated with it. Some classic runners, Walmsley, uh, Courtney Dullwater, and then Jornet, who actually just ran this recently. So um, if I put 2025, his time will be in there. I think he got third place for that race. Anyways, I have that over here. And what we're gonna do now is uh, go over here and say data equals, and we're gonna say json.loads, and we're gonna pass in our JSON. So data JSON, right? So we have that over here. And then what we're gonna do next is create our data frame. Now, how we create this data frame is we say df equals pd dot data frame. So data frame like this, and then just pass in our data, right? Pretty easy on that side of things. And then if I go over here to df, you can see we now have a data frame, right? So we have our three different ultra runners. We have the year that they ran the Western States 100, and then also the time associated with those. Okay, so now I'll show you how to work on that side of things. What we wanna do now is change our data frame and export this as a JSON, right? Okay, so now we have our data frame. What I wanna do now is take this data frame and move it into a JSON file. So this can be our second example, right? So data frame to JSON output. And let's jump right into it. So all I'm gonna do is literally one line. We're gonna say df.toJSON like this. We're gonna say Western States results dot JSON. We're gonna set an orient, which I'll show you orient in a bit. Uh, we're just gonna do records for this one. And then we're gonna set our indent. So indent say equals to two. So we have that over here, right? And then what we're gonna do is take a look at our file and take a look, we have our JSON. So I'm gonna download this JSON file. I'm just gonna open this up over here and take a look. We have our original JSON, uh, which I supplied right over here. Uh, now is a JSON file, right? So again, I showed you how to go from a JSON input into a data frame. I showed you now how to go to a data frame into a JSON input. Um, what about a JSON file, right? So how about we read in this JSON file and turn that into a data frame? So example three, right? Read in JSON file to data frame. And this is pretty easy, right? So you just go over here and say df equals pd.read JSON, and then just put in Western states results dot JSON like that. Okay, so we have our data frame over here. And then again, if we want to take a look at our data frame, it should be the exact same one we've been using, right? Athlete, year, and then also the time. Okay, awesome. So now what I want to do on here is take a look at different orient options. And what we're going to do is just walk through all of these. Uh, there's going to be a lot more detail here on the website in the future once the article is updated and things like that. But uh, let's start off with that. We'll say example for different orient options. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new data frame. And what we'll have on this side of things is df equals pd.dataframe. And then in over here, we'll pass in two of these runners and have their times associated with it. Um, so what we'll go on here is we'll have name 
and we'll put in two different runners. So we'll use Killian. And you know what? We'll use another one. There's a runner that is 80 years old that just finished Badwater. His name is Bob. So we'll put them in over here. Um, then what we're, we're going to do is take a look at laps. So one of the formats of ultra marathons, it's kind of like called a backyard ultra. So you run uh, laps constantly every single hour. So we're just going to put some hypotheticals. Um, and we'll just say 48 laps and 40 laps, right? Every 24 laps is going to be 100 miles. So, uh, some of these people go crazy in these type of races. So that's why uh, 48 and 40 laps. Regardless, we have that over here as our new data frame. And let's take a look at a few of them, right? So what we're gonna do is just create JSON strings for each of these. And we're gonna start off with records, which produces a list of different dictionaries, right? One of the most common use cases over here. So we're just gonna say JSON string equals DF to JSON, JSON. And we're gonna say orient equals records, right? And then what we're gonna do next is have a print statement under here. So what I'm gonna do is instead of just like copying and pasting this every single time, which it will be in the article, um, I'm just gonna keep changing the orient over here so that way you guys can see what these look like. So this is records, right? And you can see how that looks. Up next, we're gonna use index. So we'll type in index over here and we'll take a look at that. And index essentially has keys as the data frame index, as well as the values, which are rows as dictionaries. So we'll just pass that in and you can see now we have zero as well as one, right? And the runner, the laps associated with it, runner, and then the laps associated with it. Okay, another orient is gonna be split, right? And let's take a look at how split changes this up. So you can see we have columns over here, name, laps, index, zero, one, data, Killian, and then we also have a Bob on this side of things. Okay, another one that we could use is columns. So we could just pass in columns over here. And this is where the keys are gonna be the column names, and the values are the dictionary of the index and the value. So we can have that over here. You can see, again, quite different, not side of things. And then lastly, what we're gonna take a look at is values. And this is the 2D array of values, right? So we go over here and you can see Killian as well as Bob. Okay, now what we're gonna do is take a look at explode, right? And that's another common thing that you will see happening with JSON. So let's jump into that. All right, so example five. Next, we're gonna be taking a look at explode, which is really common to use also with JSON. So we'll say example five explode. And I have a full video on the channel already covering explode. I don't believe we talked about JSON in that video. Instead, we just took a look at a uh, specific column. But regardless, let's do that over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass in some data over here. Uh, we'll look at Jim Walmsley again. We'll also have athlete and then different years that he ran a race, right? So 2016, 2018, and 2019. And we'll just turn this into a data frame and I'll show you what this data frame looks like. So we'll say df equals pd.data frame, data frame, pass in our data. Right? If I can spell correctly, frame, pass in our data. All right, then what we're gonna do is say df over here just to show you like what this looks like, right? Athlete, and you can see we have all these values under years. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this. Each of these is going to be a separate row. So all we're going to do over here is df exploded equals df dot explode pass in our years. Right. Again, this is kind of more data cleanup than anything else, but I just wanted to show you guys that in case you don't want to check out that tutorial. Although I do recommend you watch it after, but you can see now we have changed that. So uh, not uncommon for this to happen, right? Imagine this is our JSON, and then uh, we just want to explode that out in our data frame. Okay, also it is quite common to grab JSON from an API. So let's go through that example as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this website over here, and I'm just gonna create a free account called Market Stack, and I'm gonna essentially grab their API, right? And uh, what we'll do is go through that process of just getting some information from their API. Now, I'm not gonna show you my API key, um, but let's walk through this right now. So what I'm gonna do is set up our example. So we'll say example six from an API. 
And all you want to do is replace your API key. Again, API key is free to get, right? But just set this up before we jump into the video um, or before we jump into this next example. And uh, yeah, let's do that. So what I'm going to do is say API key equals. So API key equals. I'm going to pass in my key right now. And you'll see uh, in the future after I ran this with my key. All right, I'm back. My API key is over here. Next, what we're gonna do is say base URL, and we're gonna grab this endpoint so we can go over here. And next thing we're gonna do is grab our base URL. So base URL equals over here, and just paste this in on this side of things, all right? And I might make a full video on APIs with Python here in the future, so let me know if you wanna see that. Next, what we're gonna do is pass in our parameters. Right, we're gonna need this for our API request. So params, right? We have our access key, which is gonna be our API key. Let's take a look at some Apple data, right? I only wanna see five data points. Again, nothing too really complicated on this side of things, right? And then what we're gonna do next is set a response. So response equals, and we're gonna do a request. So request.get, we're gonna pass in our base URL. So base URL, and we're gonna set our params. So params equal params like that. All right, that worked. And then what we can see over here is our data. So our data is gonna be our response JSON. So response.json like that. Response. This little typo over here. All right, and let's take a look at um, some of our data here in a second. So we're gonna say end of day data equals data.get. We're gonna pass in our data like this. Right. And now this should work over here. You can see we have uh, our data that is populated in a JSON format, right? So all of this good stuff over here. And uh, we can turn this into a data frame really easily, right? So what we're gonna do now is go over here and we're gonna say df equals pd.dataframe, pd.dataframe, pass in this data over here. And then lastly, let's take a look at our df. For this video, I probably should have made different data frames, whatever, um, but you can see open, high, low, close, right? We have five results over here. We start at the index of zero, we go through four, and there we go. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take a look at our last example, which is gonna be nested JSON. All right, so let's look at our last example, which is gonna take a look at nested JSON. So I have a pretty good example of this over here. I'm just gonna paste it in, again, grab it from our article. Um, but essentially I have some baseball cards of Babe Ruth. So I have like his 1914 Baltimore News, some value associated with it. And then I have two cards from 1933 Gaudi. He actually has four cards in this set. I just called them as variations over here, which isn't technically true. Um, but if you are looking the Gaudi set, he has four different ones. So we'll use that code on this side of things. And yeah, so what we're gonna do first is look at normalizing it and then flattening after. So what we're gonna do is set up something called DF cards. So we'll say DF cards equals PD JSON normalize. So we'll say normalize over here. So we're normalizing, right? First thing we're gonna do is look at our cards. So we say our cards over here, right? Then we're gonna set a separator. So we're gonna see separator equals, and I'm just gonna put an underscore like this over here. And then we're gonna have a, a prefix. So I'm gonna say record prefix equals, and then we'll have nothing over there. Then we'll have meta, so meta equals, and we'll put over here as year and then card set, sets. And then lastly, what we'll have next is record path, so record, path equals none. All right, so we're gonna have all that over here and we are good to go. Okay, next what we're gonna do is flatten. So what we'll have on this side of things is something called DF details. So DF details equals pd.json normalize. Once again, we're gonna pass in data. We're gonna have cards over here. Record path is none, meta, equals year, as well as card set once again. So card, oops, card set. That's gonna be our details. Then we're gonna have an if statement. So if D 
details in df detailed columns df details plus pd dot concat and we're gonna have this a uh, little bit gnarly code over here so df details dot drop should be df dot drop columns equal details df details details dot apply pd dot series say axis equals one like that hopefully no errors awesome and then what we're going to do is one last thing we're just going to flatten these variations and then we'll have both of these over here and good to go so what we're going to do on that side of things is cards with variations equal and we're going to have uh, list comprehension so c for c in data cards if variations in c all right and then lastly what we're going to do is set up our df variations so df variations equal pd.json normalize then in over here cards with variations record path equals variations meta equals and over here year and card set i know i misspelled card set i'll fix that in a second and then errors we're gonna ignore all right a lot lot of code over here um but yeah let's jump into it on that side of things so first thing we're going to look at is our df details right all right so now what we're going to do is go into df details so i go df details right and then we have all this information over here for the baltimore news card from 1914 then we have all the information that populates these under the variations. Now, if you want to take a look at the variations, right? We go over here to DF variations and it's actually a blink because I probably have an error in my code. I'm actually going to fix this really fast. So I had either a bug in the cards with variations or DF variations. I assume it's over here. I did small typo, um, but regardless, copy the code from the article. Uh, you'll see that we have the number for the cards, color, grade, value, year, and then the card set, right? So those, are underneath this variation. So you can see we have main ones over here and then we have the variations that are broken out. So yeah, that is about it. All right, so I know that last example kind of got pretty complicated, but overall like pretty easy to go in between data frames as well as JSON. Um, and again, you could have either like the JSON as text or a file, right? And the same thing, you can go back and forth on that side things. And again, there's a lot of different ways that you could output your JSON on that side as well as I showed you over here using explode is quite common I have that already in the series too so that's uh, essentially what we covered right overall like the first six examples pretty easy the last example kind of got kind of complicated but right super common to go between json and data frames uh very very easy you're gonna paste in json over here or a json file and again the same side right you, you can export the json um you can import data frame and turn that into json like a lot of possibilities out over there I recommend looking into explode a little bit because it can help clean up your json data uh, especially when you're working with data frames and then yeah i mean it's super common to get json back from apis and if you're getting into ai like it, it's important to know essentially how json works so yeah that is the video and hope you enjoyed it i appreciate you guys checking out this video on json within python pandas if you found it valuable make sure to subscribe to the channel we're trying to upload two to three videos every single week. Down below, you'll find other Python Pandas videos. You'll find a link to our Discord server, which we're trying to grow, as well as one-off coaching services and freelancing if you need any help with your projects. If you want to continue this Python Pandas playlist, though, you can click right over here.